everybody, welcome to Amy Lou Presents. My next guest is an amazingly talented singer and songwriter. Her name is Priska. What's up? Thanks for having me here, Amy. So you've been playing the piano since you were four years old. Since I was four, um, I remember plunking down those keys and actually my um, piano teacher hated me because I would be like, I need to go take a, ma uh, a nap in the middle of a, a lesson. And I would just go over. She would find me literally just like conked out on my bed. But hey, here you are today. Here I am. So the name Priska, it's really interesting and it's unique. Tell us about that name. Yeah, well, my full name is Priscilla and um, Priska was a nickname that my mom gave me. So she's been calling me that since I was a kid. And you know, when I came, came time to kind of try to find a name that suited my musical pursuits, um, nothing was more personal and more honest feeling than you know what your mom's been calling you since you were a kid. Your music is really expressive and emotional. For those Thank of you. For, for those of the people out there that haven't heard it, what would you describe it as? Well, it's kind of like you know Nora Jones meets Sarah Bareilles. Um, there's a couple of you know soul and jazz components, but for the most part, it's just very um, to by the book you know singer songwriter material. Um, I love writing about you know lost love. Um, just temporality of life um, and just anything that has to do with the human condition. Um, that's kind of what I'm all about. Speaking of weaknesses, <clears throat> um, bullying is actually a factor that makes people feel bad and weak too. And I know that sure. you struggled with that as an adolescent. So can you tell yeah. us a little bit about how that also inspired your music? I would love to tell you that. <laughs> okay. Um, so, you know, kids can be really harsh and um, I grew up, you know, um, just kind of a very like dreamy, like spacey kind of kid, like just in my own like little world. Um, and I think my parents really wanted more for me and to kind of push me academically and intellectually. And so, um, you know, they pushed me to skip a grade. And so I skipped the fourth grade, which is, you know, it's a pretty big grade to skip. So what happened was I think a lot of kids just did not take well to me and felt like, you know, I didn't belong there. And it was really challenging because, you know, here you're dealing with a huge intellectual leap um, and a huge cultural um, shift. And at the same time, you're, you know, really trying to make friends at a new school. You're really trying to make connections and you're unable to because people are telling you, you don't belong. You're not good enough. You're really weird. Um, you should stay out of this. You know, this was kind of when it came to a head. I was in seventh grade and I had this surgery on my knee and I was on crutches and I, you know, carried all my books on my backpack, in my backpack, on my back, with crutches, going up and down like these sets of stairs that were kind of like metallic and um, a bit slippery when wet, right? And I was going up the stairs and one day I fell backwards and slid down the back and my crutches went one way and the other. And I was like a turtle on my back because of the huge backpack, unable to roll to one side or the other to grab my crutches. And I was laying there until the bell rang and kids came out of class and saw me there. And it was just like this moment where I was like, I, I feel so alone. Um, I feel so disconnected, you know, and I feel so helpless. And, um, <clears throat> you know, my mom was really perturbed by the situation and actually went to the principal's office. And so I got assigned the cutest boy in school to help me carry my books. So guys, it is okay. Everything's gonna There's be There's a silver right. lining in everything. Exactly. How did that affect your music, do you say? I think bullying did play a part just because when you're externally bullied, what happens is less so what happens in the movies where you fight back and, and, and you rebel. Um, and, and for me, at least, it, I internalized everything and I went inward. Uh -huh. And when you do that, you know, you're, the human mind is a really interesting place. Um, and when you spend time just with your thoughts and yourself and um, you commit yourself to kind of exploring that, um, it can be a really beautiful creative time, even if it is wrought by pain. What are the other things that you say, you'd say <clears throat> that affects you emotionally and also inspires your writing? Um, I think, you know, I grew up, my, my father's a pastor, and so I grew up with a very um, religious upbringing and 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 that kept me really 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 sheltered but what it also invited was just like this idea of self-introspection 
of kind of like speaking about your emotions in a very like um, open way. Like, you know, if you've ever been in a small group, I'm not highly religious anymore, but if you've ever been in a small group um, in any type of like religious setting, um, you're asked to speak about your thoughts and your emotions and your process and your life story. It, it helps you start to slot that into perspective and it helps you to really learn how to story tell um, with kind of an internal focus. Mm -hmm. Now that you have a full-blown music career, <clears throat> what do your parents think? You know, your dad's a pastor and your mom named you Prisca. Yeah. What are, what are their thoughts? <clears throat> um, so I think my parents were really freaked out that they had three kids. I have two little sisters, but they had three kids that were relatively artsy. Um, my, my younger sister's a photographer and the youngest one, she's also very like crafty and um, we're all a little bit out of the box, you know? And so my dad, before he was a pastor, he was a computer engineer. And then my mom was a banker. She's like an auditor and we always make fun of her because she can spot any problem that you've ever made. Like any mistake you've ever made, she'll spot it like immediately, you know? Um, and so I think that they were just like, oh shit, what do we do with these creative kids? Um, like, you know, either we can math the hell out of them or- Did you say math? Yeah, oh. <laughs> math the hell out of them, or which they did, you know, or we can try and see um, how to cultivate it. And I think they tried to balance it really well. For example, like we did Kumon, but we also did art lessons. And, you know, we did Chinese school, but we also did like film workshops. Seeing that now and realizing the priority she gave um, and lended to having her kids um, be motivated by art and to, to really express themselves in that way, I feel super blessed by it. Hashtag blessed, hashtag like prayer hands, you know, so. Would you say that as an independent Asian American artist, mm -hmm. um, it's challenging, it's advantageous? What are the pros and cons you'd say? Well, I think just as an independent artist in general, I think it is hard to do anything if you don't feel like you have a rubric. A lot of it is self-motivation and a lot of it is just recognizing that you have something to say and that your voice matters. Like in the large schematics of things, if you don't share your story, ah, humanity is like poorer for it. And I feel like, I feel like that about every single person. And so I think that's really difficult as an independent artist when you're alone um, in your room and it's boring. You know, there's nothing to Snapchat. There's nothing to Instagram. It's literally boring. You almost have to have like an obsessive quality about you. You know, this is important enough to push through the boringness and the difficulty and the like lack of a, a direct, um, you know, ses success measure. Mm -hmm. And you're also an international artist. You know, you've performed in Mexico, Singapore, China. Tell us about those experiences and how that impacted your career. For sure. So I think traveling um, and getting to perform in different types of settings really opened my eyes to kind of just the audiences that are out there, the people that are listening, um, how, how the same we are and how different we are. Um, and so, yeah, that was really cool. I went to China a few years ago for a Minan um, Idol contest. So basically it was a Taiwanese singing competition. I don't speak Taiwanese. My, my mom barely speaks Taiwanese. My dad makes fun of my mom's Taiwanese constantly. Taiwanese um, is like Chi Chao, which is what I speak. Oh, exactly. Basically what I had to do was take my songs translate it into Mandarin, oh, wow. and then translate it into Minanese, oh my and then learn it phonetically um, for this competition in China, which was very cool, um, but very, very hard. Probably the hardest thing I've ever done. Wow. And so, you know, I cart my entire family over to China to do kind of like an American Idol style competition. And I remember the first day we got there, they bring you into a room and they're like, all right, take off all your makeup, take off all your clothes, let's just have you stand here. Take off all your and your clothes. You know, you have some like under things on. Oh, okay. It's not full nudity, guys. <laughs> I, know. You know, I know. I know people want to see that. I know, that, that, totally, you know. 100%. Put it in the photos, you know? Yeah, this like 12 year old <laughs> boy's body. But um, uh, so, you know, they have you stand there and you're, you're literally naked and you're exposed and, and everything is out in front of them, you know? All the building blocks that you every morning put together were deconstructed 
in front of a panel of judges, basically. And they, they tell you, you know, you can lose five pounds, um, your nose is kind of flat, oh my gosh. Um, your hair is this way, your eyes are, you know, slanted this way and that, and, and then you go into like a two, three hour it's makeup. Amazing. Yeah, a bit, I mean, but then you go into a two, three hour session where they fix everything. Oh, okay. So the, it was this weird combination where I had never looked the way that I looked after they had worked on me, but I had never felt so um, exposed and unlike myself. You know, it was like these two that pieces. Yeah, and so I remember coming back home from that, you know, whole experience and just wearing way too much makeup, like, you know, just trying to fix what was wrong and to cover what they had exposed. And I felt like, like a newly put together um, airplane model where the glue hasn't dried yet, you know? And I really value that experience in my life just because um, I think it made me stronger. It, I think it made me recognize who I am, like despite like all this like kind of exterior um, tweaks and, 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 and needs for, a need for change um, um, kind of prescribed by these like panel of judges, you know? Um, but just to find who I was, like, and why it was okay to love being who I am. And um, so it was a long process, though, Amy. It took, like, maybe two years to recover from it. Um, wow. Just because it was so Are you fundamental. Now? I mean, you know, every well, day is a process, yeah. right? But um, I'm much happier to be myself and much less afraid to assert who I am um, into my daily life. And, you know, that's huge. You know, you have a very distinct look, Priska. Oh, you know, you know, wow. you, you, you know, you have a very. We could do like a caricature of you. And <laughs> we, people would know who it is. It's Priska because you have these defined eyebrows, and yeah. you're very unique eyeliner, and you just have a very unique look, and it's beautiful. Oh, Amy! <laughs> Cheers! To that. Cheers! Oh, we have whiskey Cheers to by that. the way. Yeah. I know you like whiskey. Uh, you're Cheers to that. Girl Cheers after to my own women heart. Cheers on to the inside and outside. Amen to that. You're very beautiful yourself, Amy. Oh, thanks. I try. <laughs> I try to look like you from time. You know, okay, I well, I actually do, came do looking I like you. Stuff, so. <laughs> so same, same. <laughs> Speaking of human condition, you have a new song out called Fly the Coop. Mm -hmm. Tell us about it. Um, so, Amy, have you ever been in a relationship that you probably shouldn't have been in? Yes, but my boyfriend's watching. <laughs> My boyfriend. This oh, has no. nothing to do with you. This is all in quotation marks. Um, but you know, I was in a relationship that. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm just kidding, Mark. We love you, Mark. But yeah, yeah. Up. But I totally can relate to that. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, so I was in a relationship a few years ago that um, it just, with someone that didn't treat me right, that didn't appreciate me, that was, um, you know, just very. Uh, he would put me down a lot. Oh, no. He was very negative. Yeah, and he would like, you know, he would, he would just say like, oh, you're pretty enough, and you know, oh, you're, you oh, know, just pretty enough. Yeah, and like, you know, with music, he was, he was just very, very critical, and he wasn't really a, a musician at all. Oh, yeah, it's okay, but you know, when you're in that situation, a lot of times, there, it's easier to stay in them than it is to actually leave them. You know, because the thought of actually leaving and breaking up and cutting social ties and um, you know, whatever relationship you had with their parents yeah, and that, that community. Comfort. Exactly. Um, but there comes a time when you ha there comes a time when you have to love yourself enough to take action and you know, fly the coop, get the hell out of there. And um, for anyone, you know, watching, if you're in that situation, let me tell you, it's like worth it. It's so worth it. Um, if you know you're in a bad way and you know that you're not in the right place, you don't have to stay there. Like there's, it's not necessary. It's not necessary for you to stay there. You can get out. And there's support on the other side, for sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then Fly the Coop is, is dedicated to that feeling and that, that feeling of freedom when you actually do leave the person that you're not supposed to be with. Absolutely, and just realizing that you had the strength, um, that you can stand on your own, that you don't need to believe anyone who's telling you that you're too weak to do that. You also have new songs coming up, and you're thinking about maybe an EP at the end of this year. So tell yeah. us about that. Um, really excited to just be writing a lot more right now. Um, I was gigging a lot, and now I feel like the gigging has, you know, kind of slowed down, partially intentionally. 
um, and it's a good time to just write. So I'm really hoping to be able to put together, it'll be my first official EP sometime by the end of this year. So keep your eyes on the lookouts. Yeah. Follow her on social. I'll have all her links below. You can follow me at, at Perska Music on pretty much every channel there is out there. I'm on, you know, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. Work that marketing. Yeah, girl. yeah, yeah. Let's just get it in. Let's get it in. <laughs> follow me. Let's have a journey. Let's journey together. Let's hang out. <laughs> yeah, we're so happy to have you here. Thank you so, so much for here. sharing a few minutes with us. Oh my gosh, we had a great time. Thanks so much for watching Amy Lou Presents. I hope you enjoyed the interview with Priska. Be sure to subscribe if you like what you see, and leave it in the comments who you want to see next time. So we're gonna play a little game with Prisca called This or That. Ooh. So basically, I'm gonna read two things off of a list and then you're gonna tell me which one you like better and why. Okay. Okay, you ready? <sighs> okay. I'm ready. Okay. Okay. Lay it on me. 21 or Brown Eyed Girls? 21. Why? Those are so cute. <laughs> Steve Yun or Lee Pyeon Yun? Steve Yun. Adorable. Did like you see that? Dead? I mean, I don't love, uh, I haven't really seen much of The Walking Dead, but in every interview I've seen of him, he's hilarious. Have you seen him on Conan in the Not Korean yet. spa? Oh, really? I should it's, look that up. It's just, <laughs> I fell a little bit in love. I mean, he was naked, which was not the reason why I totally felt like Yeah, him. sure, Prisca, uh-huh. <laughs> okay, Jackie but Chan. But he's cute, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. So Jackie Chan or Jet Li? This is a tough one. I'm gonna say Jet Li. Um, not, you know, for lack of talent in Jackie Chan, but Jet Li just kind of gets my engine revving a little bit more. Okay, okay. Harold or Kumar? Harold. Why? Oh my God, he's so cute. <laughs> I totally, wait, what was he in when we were younger? He was in he like was a in, bunch of stuff. He was in American Pie. Oh, he was he in was American the Pie. Guy. Oh my gosh. One of the MILF guys. He's so adorable. <laughs> and both of them are in um, How I Met Your Mother from time to time. Mm -hmm. They're both really charming, I have to say, but I'm I'm totally Harold. Okay, okay. Crouching Tiger or Hidden, I mean, <laughs> oops. <tro> <laughs> Crouching Tiger? Okay, okay, okay. What's Crouching, that about? Okay, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, or Ip Man? Crouching Tiger. Okay. I, it was just, it's more nostalgic for me, I okay. think, because I, I, I remember watching that for the first time and just being like... Did you watch the new one on Netflix? No, but I will check it out Harry tonight. Shroom Jr. is in it. Harry Shroom Jr. Okay, all right. Does he dance or is he just doing kung fu? Uh, he's... He's His using, a, he, he's was, using a sword. Yeah. Ooh, Amy. Yeah, he's, he's <laughs> <laughs> all right, a big he's, one. He's wielding... That's why a it's straight to Netflix, item. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, girl, power to you. <laughs> okay, um, okay. Uh, Aziz Ansari or Russell Peters? <sighs> okay, this is hard. Um, I think Russell Peters, as a stand-up comedian, was funnier in his heyday. Uh, but then I think Aziz is just so uniquely talented. So Aziz. Yeah, Aziz, but he needs to work on his, um, you know, on stage chops a little bit. Jimmy Choo or Vera Wang? Uh, Jimmy Choo. The heel? Yeah, I mean, gorgeous. I mean, <sighs> I mean, yeah. I think Vera Wang's obviously such an icon, but I think Jimmy Choo's for me. Okay. Boba milk tea or matcha green tea? Boba milk tea, come on. Oh yeah, you did that video, huh? <sighs> That viral video with millions of hits. Ooh, oh, with the Fung Brothers, yeah. <laughs> okay, Boba. I, you know, I remember when Boba was just the free thing they gave with every meal out in the 626. So if you ordered like, you know, a styrofoam box of food, they would just give you a free Boba, sometimes two per box. It was awesome. That's what boba used to be in the but 66. But now it's like eight dollars like eight dollars. Yeah, it's a gateway drug for alcohol. So you read my drink. mind. Yeah. Because the next one is Coca Heroin. Coca Heroin? Coca Cola, mom. Coca Cola. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, you know, those things are addictive. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. With the polar bear? You get high yeah. on those things. Mm. You get high on those drinks. Oh, yeah. You start running around. You get off the walls. <laughs> okay. Speaking of alcohol, tequila or vodka? 
So I'm gonna go tequila with this. I'm actually a whiskey girl, as you said earlier, but I feel like tequila, if you wanna party, if you're gonna party, you just might as well go all the way. Vodka's just a hangover in the making. Okay, bucket list full bottle party with Prisca. Full bottle of whiskey with Prisca. Let's do it, guys. We'll <laughs> eat some good food. You know, Korean food is the best when you're imbibing in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> with that, let's toast to more whiskey. Cheers. Cheers. It was great being here with you, Amy. This was awesome. Thank you so much, Prisca. I hope we can we come hang so out much again. fun. Yeah. Oh my gosh, best day ever. Come back anytime. Yes, ma'am. Mm. Wow. <laughs> That's strong. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go pass out backstage now. We're gonna go drink more is what she means. <laughs> bye, everyone. Okay, bye, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks so much for watching Amy Lou Presents. I hope you enjoyed the interview with Prisca. Be sure to subscribe if you like what you see and leave it in the comments who you wanna see next time.